Thank you. Betty, could I ask you to bring me one of those uh, programs up and one of the little cards, if you still have those? Oh, okay. Why should you look at one? I, I found one. So if, if you haven't gotten one of these, or if you have not gotten one, I invite you to uh, take it with you. What's your hand? My God. Uh, this is a, a clip art that I took off of a uh, Microsoft website. They allow you to download for free, and I thought it was very impressive. So, if you like this picture, we also have a website that has the same information, and we post these, or at least I try to post one a week. So if you'd like to go back to that website again and again, we, we try to keep you posted and all the latest information that Alexander's putting out. Uh, Betty has a, a card here. So if you want to get to that website, you have to use uh, ncihd.org. And uh, that'll get you there. Well, with a few clicks to get it. <laughs> but if you notice, we're, we're, we're filming this or recording this information, I like to think, rather than just me <laughs> or Alexander. Uh, there's some of these cards on the back table back there, so it'll make it easier for you to check in on the website. And, and there's a lot of stuff posted already. I think we have, I guess under the blog section, we have probably 10 or 12, I think, or something like that now. Uh, and they're, for the most part, are different uh, subject matter. And what I, I want to tell you is, is today, forgiveness is a very small part of what I'm going to ask Alexander to speak on. Uh, and the reason for that is, is uh, forgiveness is, is like energy. So what I want to do is, is to request that Alexander speaks on God. What is God? Where is God? Why is God? And then I, I want to see if we'll bring this article here, this forgiveness in. And also I, I want to explain some of the, the new signposts of things that are happening for 2012. So if you haven't paid attention, we want to try to bring you up to date on that and, and let you see that there's really something happening. This is a, probably as an active time spiritually as, as we've ever had. Uh, Jesus is not walking around. At least I haven't seen him lately anyway. <laughs> but there, there really is, are, are things happening. And I think when Alexander ex explains a little bit more about his concept of what God is, maybe you'll uh, recognize some of the stuff that's happening. So what I want to do now is, is to bring uh, Alexander in and, and let him, we'll give him 15 minutes and see if he can get this all in. So. <laughs> uh, one of the things I like to do is to challenge Alexander just to see if he can do what I suspect he can do. <laughs> and so, so, so far he's been pretty much capable of, of bringing through whatever he likes on the thing. So I, I simply request and what comes through is up to Alexander. So let me bring Alexander in. <clears throat> Greetings, we are Alexander. So you're in a very special time and place, like never before. And you have not been this far before. What we want to explain to you is, is a little bit about what God is, where God is, and why God is. And we'll start off perhaps with presenting to you that if you believe, like the Old Testament suggests, that there is a God in heaven that is revengeful, that's your truth, that is a reality. You create that. But if you prefer the New Testament, where God is a loving, forgiving being, that is God also. That is a evolution of thought process, of evolution of humanity. And that brings you to current time. What is God? Now this is where it gets to be fascinating because all of a sudden, science is attempting to prove that there is a God. And so far they seem to be on the right track. They are suggesting to you 
that indeed there is a thing called a God particle. And this is a result of uh, studies at these, uh, I think they're called particle accelerators. I think you have one in France and Switzerland, if I'm not mistaken, and you also have one, I think, in the United States. You have China involved with this. And what they found so far is when they collide two protons, I think an antiproton and a proton together, and the result of that collision is the, I want to say, explosion of, of different energy matters coming out. And they have discovered with the intent of looking for something that has the ability to take mass and give it shape and give it form. And they're calling that the God particle. They have decided that this particular energy has the ability to create weight and gravity. And that's as far as they've gotten. They do not get into the religious or the spiritual aspects of that. But that's a signpost along the way. This is 2012. This is a time of change. This is a time of evolution. So what we are presenting to you is that God is more than this biblical interpretation. God is more than any other religion has ever put forth. If you do not believe there is a God, you wouldn't exist. None of this would exist. It would be complete void, and even that has this godly energy. This God energy has the ability to make form, but it just goes beyond that. It has the ability to develop a consciousness that is able to evolve itself so then you begin to ask, what is God? Now what we are proposing to you is that you are that God energy. You have the ability to create, to create with your mind, with your consciousness, beyond anything you have ever imagined before. There is a uh, speech from, I think, uh, a gentleman by the name of Mandela a few years back that says our greatest fear is the fear of ourself, in effect. We are afraid of what we're capable of. And that is what we're speaking of. You have this ability to create. You are this godly energy. Now, if you want to divide it, then that's fine too, because then you have to admit that you're sons and daughters of God. But notice the implications here. No longer are you restricted to seeing God as a fatherly figure upon some cloud that's revengeful or that God is a all-forgiving figure but see it's still personalized and all of a sudden you're drawn into this energy that God is everything without that particular God particle if you will nothing would exist and it is a strange thing that God energy works on love works on the glue that puts everything together if you have a negative thought, even now, we propose to you that you create a black hole, and that black hole begins to run in your mind, and it keeps recreating and recreating all the negative things that you do not wish. That is a godly creation also. But you get stuck within that routine. Now, that's where we wish to come into this forgiveness part, because you are consciousness. Everything that you think, everything that you do, your attitude, your perspective, is tied up in the world around you. You create your reality. You create the world. It is the most odd thing. This universal energy, or this God energy, or this universal creation energy, whatever you wish to call it, is most dynamic. It wastes no energy. So when you have an experience happening for one person, two people, a thousand people, every bit of that energy is being utilized. Nothing is wasted. So imagine that. You have a conflict with someone. Someone else steps in. The police are called. <laughs> all that energy begins to intermingle. It's all connected. Now. Is there a purpose for that? The most interesting thing is, it would seem like we create lessons for ourselves. 
but lessons would seem to indicate that you have to rise above, you have to recognize that, you have to achieve something. The reality is, all you have to do is have that experience and see how you feel about it. And those emotions are the result of that. Now, to give you a for instance, forgiveness. We have suggested to you that forgiveness is more than saying, I'm sorry, to yourself or anyone else. When you forgive someone, if you've heard someone say, I forgive that person for whatever atrocities they have done, but a lot of times they will say, I can forgive that person, but I cannot forget or cannot forgive that action. And we propose to you, you have not fully forgiven that person. You have not fully forgiven yourself. Because that energy is only partially, I want to say, cleared. And that's what we're talking about, clearing that energy, that creation. So the next step along that era is to allow that person and that experience to be okay with you. You simply say, okay, I've forgiven that person. But when you begin to allow that, then you allow that person to have done that, you allow that experience to have been okay with you. Then you modify that energy that's there, you change it. So all of a sudden, it's not so sharp. It doesn't mean it will not happen again, but it usually means if it happens again, you do not have such a personal reaction to it. You have modified that a little bit. Now, after you have achieved that, next step we propose to you is releasing that energy. When you release it, it means everything that has happened is just another experience. It is like a childhood experience that is long gone unless somebody brings it up you never think of it again so when you release that you have cleared an awfully lot of energy and you think boy that's remarkable i've actually cleared my energy so i'm operating on all cylinders and everything is great but you still haven't quite done that when you have done this you may feel that you feel a feeling of euphoria. Life is great. You have passion in the morning. You get up to all the things you want to do. But the only thing that makes it stick is thankfulness. You have to give thanks for that. And when you give thanks for it, you incorporate it into your energy. You make it real. It's the same way when you do a prayer or when you're given something. The healing energy that we have proposed here this morning Notice it was not a physical thing, it is a conscious thing. You identify that, you attach your energy to it, and you send it out. And we propose to you that is more powerful for you and everyone that accepts that than anything you can ever do or say. Now, signpost number two. You have wars and battles for quite some time now. You have Vietnam. I would hardly say that you were successful in that, but you had an experience, did you know? And then you have got yourself involved with Iraq, Afghanistan. Notice that there is a little bit of a lesson going on here. Just as you would have personal lessons, so do you have lessons as a country. So you have done at least, what, three wars, three battles, plus. And you have been involved in all sorts of overt operations trying to one up someone else and what have you gained except enemies what if instead of being policeman of the world that you tried to love and to get along and to understand and allow all those peoples and societies that are different than you then what would be your outcome what would be Vietnam if you had not interfered what would be Iraq? What would be any of the others that you're involved with? And you will say, well, it probably would be no better. But you, as a country, would not be in that negative energy. You would find yourself being pulled in, being supportive, having trade and commerce with those countries, and having 
a sense of being respected. Wars and battles never accomplish anything long term. So the excuse that you have to be proactive in order to be safe is hardly legitimate. You have simply created enemies for yourself. Notice that you created conscious resistance to your proposal. God's energy only works properly when it is love, compassion, when it is the glue that holds everything together. So, what is God? We propose to you that it is everything that exists and more. And it is like being in a primary school when they talk about the Old Testament, about a revengeful God, and then you have evolved, and all of a sudden you find that God is loving, compassion, forgiving, as per Jesus. And now, if you're into metaphysics, if you're brand new to this, we're proposing to you that you are God. You have to duck when you say that. There's a lightning bolt flying and all this kind of stuff. So if you have not played with this energy yet, recognize that the first time that you say, I am God, do you not duck? Do you not expect something to happen? And to your amazement, you're still alive the next morning. So recognize that as an evolvement. You evolve to be more conscious. You are primary conscious beings. This physical manifestation that you do, running this body around and doing all your nine to fives and weekend warriors and all this kind of stuff is a result of what you think in your consciousness. But you're entering an era when you're going to recognize that you indeed are God and your consciousness has something to do with the world around you. God, we propose to you, is this mass consciousness and you are one species, this human being, that is evolving most rapidly. It doesn't mean you have gotten rid of all your inabilities or your war-type ways or your policeman attitude. It simply means that all of a sudden you have to be responsible for what you think. Everything that you think needs to be positive, needs to be loving, needs to be compassionate in everything that you do. Now, beyond that, there is another step. Recognize that you are the creator. The things that you think become a reality. And you're not here alone. You are part of this mass consciousness, so it all interacts. So the things that you think, the things that you feel, however bit as powerful as this that I think, or any other person. You are one individual spark of consciousness, and you are part of this mass consciousness that creates, and you will not evolve as a human race until all are brought forward, at least a hundred or so of you monkeys, as you would say. You have heard that theory? A hundred monkeys one place learn some trait, then the whole world of monkeys evolves. It is similar to what humans are. If enough of you are together and you have this idea that you are conscious beings and you create primarily with your consciousness, then maybe someone else will get it. So the reason we're bringing this information forward is because it is time. There are signposts along the way. 2012 is a time of transition. Part of that transition is recognizing that you are gods, capable of creating, of manifesting into this world around you creating the energy that you like. And if you think that isn't happening, look around. Look at the ones that are having a difficult time in their life. We propose to you that is a thought consciousness being manifested. And it is much easier to look at someone that's having a rough time than it is to look at somebody that seems to be doing okay. Because you think, that's the way you're supposed to be if you're doing it this way, that's the right way to do it. But look at someone that is such a grand manifestation that all their negative thoughts are produced around them and their world becomes a disaster. That is not to say that we don't have compassion for them, but notice that ability. So what we're proposing is that you each have the ability to create into your world, whether it is about health, wealth, 
happiness? It all is a conscious decision. Notice how you import it or how you export it. If you think that you are unwell, notice that black hole that's happening. You have created this awareness that says, at the very least, I'm ill and it's hard to get that playing into a positive attitude where you think you're happy and healthy because the first time you jump up and the body doesn't necessarily agree with you. And you think, well, if I'm that conscious, then why can't it happen overnight? Because you haven't cleared that energy. If you're having trouble with abundance, recognize where it's coming from. If you're absolutely certain that you're worthy, then you have abundance all around you. Just don't identify with your monies. Abundance is not about money. Abundance is having everything that you want. That is a conscious awareness. It doesn't mean you have to be a millionaire, but it means that you get past the point to where you worry about your finances. Consciousness, positive thoughts. Notice what makes you happy. <laughs> Notice what makes you unhappy. That's easier, yes? Take that and do the opposite. There's no one saying that you have to be unhappy, that you have to be sad. Choose to be happy. Happiness is probably one of the best doses of medicine you can ever give yourself. Be happy and the whole world begins to change. All of your inabilities become abilities. It is a most magnificent thing. So we have given you just a little bit of insight on this. And what we wish to do is to take this home and <laughs> hopefully read it before it goes into the circular file. Uh, and, and hopefully you will, you will get some sense of that. But this is very, we will say, cutting edge information. Forgiveness is not a physical thing. Forgiveness is a mental awareness. And you have to do it completely. You cannot do it halfway. And one of the most fascinating things is Another person cannot forgive you. Only you can forgive yourself. Somebody else can say, I forgive you a million times. If it doesn't sink in, if it doesn't register, you haven't cleared any energies. Perhaps that person managed to clear something, but you still have that negative attitude, this awareness that you've been done wrong, you've been a victim, it keeps playing through your consciousness. Now, that sounds like it's rather petty for gods, does it not? Recognize your biggest challenge is being able to control and direct your thoughts so that they are positive, they're loving, they're compassionate, and that you accept anything and everything that's given to you. When you become aware that you are the creator, then you will find you no longer need to correct situations. Everything is perfect as it is. There is some energy being expressed. If two people are having a conflict, it's energy trying to work itself out. You step in, you become a third party to that. If you think you need to advise, separate, or whatever else. Recognize that you're interfering, quote, with God's creation. This creation that says energies have to play themselves out. They have to balance. If something's unbalanced, it will keep bumping heads until it does work itself out. So are you intelligent enough, aware enough, that you can step in and say, this is exactly what it needs? Or can you trust that perhaps there is a greater power, this creative element that's created all things, that really has awareness that there is something special going on? Now, does God exist? best example I can give to you is that you exist, do you not? You are created. You are here, you are alive, you are breathing, and you have a consciousness. You think. In fact, you cannot keep from thinking. Try that. <laughs> we like to play with this white elephant with spots, polka dots, pink spots on it. If I say, don't think of this pink elephant, or 
this white elephant with the pink polka dot spots. What happens? It is all in your memory, all in your thoughts, all in your thinking. It comes up automatically. But then you, at some point, need to forget about it, release it, let it go, or whatever else. <laughs> so that is what we wish to tell you about today. Why is God? What do you think? If you're here, it is God evolving. It is your energy being taken to the next level. This is one of those highlights in spirituality, we wish to say. Every time you have someone special come across your world, it steps you up higher. But all of a sudden, it's not Jesus making his second return. It's you. You are the one that's here to recognize that you are the same as Jesus. Your energies, your consciousness is every bit as powerful, as real, as that one that was Jesus that walked this earth. There's no difference. You are God's creation, and you are God created. So it is the most amazing thing. And lastly, where is God? <laughs> ah, look around. Indeed. You are that. And if you can look at another person and see God in that person, and recognize the power that is there and the love and the compassion and the ability to create anything and everything that you wish. And then you look at the world around you, what beautiful examples. So that person that's laying in the gutter on Sunday morning that has had a little bit too much to drink or too much partying is as powerful as you. It is a demonstration of consciousness. Maybe it's not for that person's highest and best, but if you get to see it and you get to witness it, there's something there for you. Every time you see an experience, recognize there's something there for you. If it registers, what do you get out of it? It doesn't mean you have to judge, but it allows you to choose how you are being as gods. So we wish to thank you for being here. We hope we have, in some sense, challenged your belief of what God is without disturbing you too often much. But recognize there is an evolvement, there is an awareness that keeps growing, becomes greater. And this is that time and space when God is not something outside of you, but God is you, the creator, the one that manifests everything. So why did you give your power away? You are the most powerful being that you will ever encounter, that you will ever know. No one else has power over you. It is all within your consciousness. How powerful can you stand to be? Or can you let this physical body belittle you? Think that you are less than that? Can you allow the age and the deterioration of it to say, I'm not powerful? When the reality is this physical body is nothing more than a suit of clothes that you put on and you take off repeatedly. This is not the first time you've been here. <laughs> well, perhaps in this particular body. But you have been in this earthly plane before. And you have been warriors and you have been slaves and all of a sudden we're telling you you're gods. That you're no longer a victim unless you choose it. So how would you choose to be as gods? The strange thing happens when you find that you are all-powerful. You have no big desires to change the world. You accept it as it is. It becomes your movie, your playground, your awareness. And you can look around and see all the beautiful things that are happening. All things are God, or of God, are created by God. And you are here to witness, to see what your part is in that. You're here to watch the birth of stars, birth of the universe, but mostly you're here to observe and be part of this evolution of humanity like never before. Second coming, 
You're that. We are Alexander. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> let me get back together here. So, what we have, I don't know how Alexander did it on time, but he seemed to have completed what he had to say, so thank you for allowing Alexander in, and thank you for allowing me to present him. Yeah.